Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is your guide Olena from Ukraine, from Kyiv. And in this video I will try to be more informative. I'm so I sound artificial. I don't want to sound artificial. I want to remain human and share with you the news from Ukraine that, uh, you know, like shocked me most of all, or kind of, I think these are very important. Uh, and I want to share this new, uh, news with you to make them more human. We are outside of our, in our backyard, over there, Taras and Katya are playing with the bugs, catching insects, Darina is sleeping. Uh, a little bit windy, so I'm not sure about the, vo uh, the voice, the sound, but we'll, we'll try. So in this video, uh, I'd like to talk to you about a family, uh, a woman with her children from Kramatorsk. Uh, mother is not walking anymore. He, she, one leg is lost, another one is uh, wounded. Her daughter, 11 years old, Jana, she lost two of her legs. So she will never walk again. And uh, her twin brother, he is the only uh, who left in their family who can walk. They were wounded in Kramatorsk uh, when they were trying to leave the territory that was dangerous. Russians, they, they launched a missile directly uh, to the railway station from which people were evacuating. They were running away from Russia that was attacking them by the way officially saying that they are protecting russian speaking population so this woman she says that she will never forget she will never forgive herself that she decided to go outside of the railway building of the railway station to buy some tea so when she stepped on the platform all of a sudden she heard an explosion the explosion happened a big piece of metal fell and exploded on the railway station. Uh, she went outside to take some tea from volunteers. She says that she will never for forgive herself for, for, for this cup of tea. <laughs> My God. Because maybe if she could stay inside of the railway station, your girl who is only 11 years old would remain with her legs and she would be able to dance, you know, run and jump and be a child. Oh my God. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Just so much of trauma here, so much of pain every day, every day. It's so hard. It's so hard for local mothers to make a decision. I remember when I heard about this case in Kramatorsk, about this explosion in Kramatorsk. That was, you know, the last drop. <laughs> I was overwhelmed with the emotions because just before the day before we revealed uh, the atrocities that Russians committed in Bucha, just near my home, and then the next day they made this explosion in Kramatorsk on the railway station when people were trying to leave, and I was like... <laughs> One day I was like, I was, I was not running away from Kiev. Oh my God! What if Russians, you know, approach it, Obolony? They would do the same. You know, they would rape Katya, they would rape Taras, they would rape me, they would kill us all, they would torture us, whatever what they did in Bucha. And how stupid I am that I'm not evacuating my children. I had this thought, but then the next day I saw people who were trying to evacuate themselves, but they couldn't because they were killed by Russian missile. They hit the railway station. You never know, like, you don't know what to do because nothing is safe. You have no guarantees. You know, guarantee, you have no guarantees that if you stay in the shelter, it will not be destroyed by a missile. You have no guarantees. If you go to the railway station and drive somewhere, take a train somewhere to a kind of safer place, you don't know if this place will be really safe. You don't know if you if, if the railway station is safe. Like it's nowhere safe in Ukraine. And when I told my husband, like, look, my our my best friend, she's in the United Kingdom with her children. So she moved to the safe place and he said, well, if you watch Russian TV right now and they demonstrate how they can hit the United Kingdom with nuclear uh, weapons, you don't, you never know like what they will are going to really do and where it's really safe. 
I don't believe that they will really use the nukes and right now we see how Russia is kind of retreating and changes its um, political dialogue, let's say. They are now kind of uh, not threatening anymore the world with nukes. Yeah, you remember this May Day parade in Moscow when everybody were, you know, waiting that maybe Putin will declare the war, maybe Putin will declare mobilization, maybe P Putin will just launch the nuclear uh, weapons. But he, 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 he said nothing about, you know, he was not threatening and terrorizing the world with nukes anymore. Uh, and he was kind of saying some excuses about uh, this war that uh, I had no choice to, to start this war. Ukraine would attack us, NATO would attack us. It's like mm, the same kind of speech he could tell on the trial somewhere in Mariupol, for example, or in Kramatorsk, like saying that uh, I, uh, when he will be put to justice, right? When he will be accused and all of this the other guys who, who help this machine working. Yes, okay. Um, the family, uh, Natalia, this woman with her children, they are right now in the Lviv, in the hospital. You know what surprises me a lot on these photographs? That despite everything that they went through, despite, you know, being so much, you know, wounded, they keep smiling on the photograph. You see, they remain human, they remain sensitive, they are not, you know, stones. They they keep ability to feel something and even to smile, to be grateful, you know, even for the fact that they stay alive, the other people take care of them. Well, I'm sure that there will be people who will take care of them. There is a lot of programs when these kind of wounded people, they are sent uh, somewhere to Europe where they have, you know, help from from European doctors where conditions right now are, are much better than in Ukraine. Of course, you know, these people would prefer to stay at home and just you know, live their simple Ukrainian life. But unfortunately, Russia attacked, they, they kill us, they destroy our homes, they destroy our factories. Uh, they keep doing this. And, you know, my husband and many other husbands, instead of, you know, spending time with us, they have to take these ugly pieces of metal and go to the war, you know, and just shoot and try to protect their families. I mean, why? It's so beautiful everywhere. You know, it's we, we are living on such a beautiful planet. I mean, even you in Russia, you have beautiful nature over there. Why not taking care of your nature, of your forest, which is burning, of your of your land, why not you know, planting flowers, why not educating your children, why not you know just being happy for you know, smelling the flowers, why Why do, are you coming here to kill the other people on our land? You can come be here our guest. Why do you throw all these bombs and everything? I am emotional and I'm not trying to hide these emotions. You know, those uh, people who uh, who show you the news, you know, I suppose they have so strong emotions too, but they cannot allow themselves to cry on TV, though anchors, TV stars. But I'm sure that people like, I don't know, like Anderson Cooper, for example, whom I personally met, that it hurts to them too, but they just, you know, this is our journalistic tradition. We cannot show on our faces our real emotions, but I'm sure, you know, because I was a journalist, I know, I, I know it, that they really care and they are suffering inside when they show you this news. And I know that you are suffering when you watch this news because you cannot stay indifferent if you are a human being.
Who are these Russians? Are they human beings too? What made them such animals? Not even animals, animals are good, and monsters! <sighs> maybe you heard right now there were some explosions. I don't know what is this. I suppose this is maybe the mining uh, of the territory. They say it will take about 100 years to d totally demine Ukraine. You know, till today we are, fr from time to time, we are finding the remains, like some missiles, on the fields and the forests, you know, when digging something of the Second World War. So, the missiles of this war will be found for, for years in Ukraine too, unfortunately. Okay, I'm already speaking to you for about 11, almost 12 minutes. Uh, I will try to edit this video, just put some photographs on the top and put it... Uh, uh, put it on my YouTube uh, and uh, please leave your comments. I'm sorry I'm not able to respond right now much on the comments because as you can see I have three children, you know my situation. I'm not even liking right now putting the like button on your comments but um, it would be nice if you could press the like button and leave a comment under this video It's so I will know if it makes any sense to do any kind of such videos for you guys because I'm um, Yep, this is why I do this. So thank you for your attention. Thank you for watching this. I know that for you, it's not easy to watch this too, because why not just, you know, having some uh, cappuccino and going somewhere to the beach, or I don't know, but, but you're watching this, which means you, you, you care. So thank you so much that you care. <laughs>